good. I couldn't tell you the last time I wasn't breathing recycled air. Hey, let's keep our voices down. The clinic doesn't exactly know I'm giving its supplies away. That being said, I've been expecting someone soon. I've heard Bayou really has a vice grip on Neon right now. I have some supplies I can give you. Should be more than enough for now, and it shouldn't draw any suspicion from the clinic. I'll have them loaded onto your ship. What the clinic doesn't know won't hurt them. That's why it's important to keep this as confidential as possible. I'm putting my job on the line to do this, but I know that the people of Neon need help. I'm willing to take the risk and skim a few supplies from the clinic. But if the clinic finds out, then I'm out of a job and Neon is out of supplies. Again. 
So, let's not be too conspicuous. He's a good friend of mine. We both worked at the same clinic in Aquila City. The work was hard, and I was really young and nervous. But he always looked after me during those days and helped me as much as he could. So, to answer your question, I'm doing this because I know for a fact he'd do the same for me. No questions asked. Sorry. I can't do that. This is the most I can give you without drawing suspicion. Huh. That makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. Oh, I really shouldn't do this. If the clinic finds out... <sighs> All right. You win. You're very... persuasive. I can throw in a few extra supplies, but I'm not going to make this a regular thing, okay? They'll be loaded onto your ship. You're in the Vanguard, right? Hey, thanks for your service. Need some work done? Can Reliant Medical do for you? Please state the nature of your medical emergency. We both apprenticed under Mary Cartwright at the medical facility in Aquila City. Spent a heck of a lot of hours working together. Abby and I got along exceptionally well. Don't get me wrong, we're just friends of course. She's young enough to be my daughter. I almost felt bad leaving her behind when I was hired to work for Reliant and Neon, but I knew she'd do well wherever she ended up. Reached out to her a few months ago when I ran into trouble here, and she's been helping me ever since. Not much, I'm afraid, but at least the prices are reasonable. Fantastic. That'll really help out around here. Thanks for everything. These supplies will be put to good use. Here, take this. I threw in a bit extra for you, since you really came through for me.
Okay, confession time. Being single on a moon base is the worst. I only get like an hour to use the communication link to Earth every couple of days. And let me tell you, there's long distance dating, and then there's like long distance dating, you know? Oh, hey there, I'm a scientist, deadly employed, willing to take you out for coffee in like six months when I'm back from space. It's not a great opening line. You seriously can't get a date? You're an astronaut. Hey, no one asked you. Voltaire really is something else. A supercomputer so powerful, they put it on the damn moon to keep it cool. Although by that logic, they should be running it purely in the vacuum of space. But hey, good marketing material. Uh, I've been spending some off hours running some dumb simulations, just because I can. My favorite so far is simulating the sound of every duck on Earth quacking after receiving a piece of bread. You didn't know you wanted a real-time sim of feeding all the ducks, but now you have it. <laughs> You're welcome, humanity. Nova Galactic Project Log, Principal Engineer Lang Shu. Voltaire is being reconfigured for this new initiative. The math we're being asked to crunch is ambitious, even for a supercomputer. We might as well be asking it to count every grain of sand in every desert on Earth. Who came up with these original equations? Our partner isn't being very open about it. Every question I have goes through some discretionary channel. I'm surprised we even know we're working on a ship. When I accepted the assignment up here, we were told to bring a couple of personal items. Some psychological study said it helps when you're away from Earth this long. I brought my grandmother's old abacus. I would play with it on her lap, and she'd teach me the Russian for all the numbers. She, uh... just... got word that she passed. The next shuttle isn't for three months, so I'll, uh... I won't be able to go to the funeral. Goodbye, Babushka. Thank you for teaching me math. It brought me to the moon.
Nova Galactic Project Log, Principal Engineer Lang Shu. I admit, this is not the most disciplined team I've ever run. Malcolm keeps stealing computational time on Voltaire, and thinks I don't know this. And Sabina's been distracted lately, but won't tell anyone why. I really should demand answers from both of them. But honestly, I'm too preoccupied with this contract. We all are. Despite anything going on in our personal lives, there's something special about what we're building here.
Engine spin up time almost complete. Total time 5 minutes 22 seconds. Right on schedule. How are the helium 3 valves holding Nova? We double checked the leakage concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. Any changes to the calculation sequence from Voltaire? No changes since we uploaded the last figures yesterday. It's a clean shot from here to Jupiter. One day the computer will be on board the spaceship. Just imagine that. One miracle of science at a time, Canaveral. Counting down in five, four, three, two, one. look good. The ship should be cruising Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all pretty excited down here in NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years. Gear looks green, ready to land.
books lately? Nice day, isn't it? Let me guess. <laughs> you miss. If something's on your mind, you can tell me. I should start charging for my services. No, it's fine. Go ahead. Don't stay away too long. Any troubles you need to share? I'm glad you're back. Let's get moving. Hey, good to see you. starting to interfere with my instruments.
position. I wonder what prevented this particular colony ship from lifting off.
Station Hook. Dr. Judith Tatien. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting hook samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Eiser comes with two members of the military. Everything they've brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cause you up to Dr. Eiser, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I... I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log. Dr. Judith Satin. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I... I don't know how much I should say, but... The periodic table just got thrown out the window.
these calculations came from. There's something wrong with the math. I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects. No motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to pump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against a brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise.
back around all that gear. found one of Vasco's long-lost relatives. I'm sure you'll be thrilled to find out. Abilities are making me a bit 
get us. Project Log, Dr. Victor Isa. We turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore, but further work is going to have to take place in space somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us? It's all going to be possible. Project Log, Dr. Judith Petian. I watched the Gravjet test from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming and worrying. It could take years. Decades before we know what all these side effects of operating a grab drive can be, but no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains.
sections of this storage area. I'm certain we'll find it.
actually got to visit your labs back when we were working on the Grav Drive projects. Seems like ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we're seeing. Our guess is that the pods might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I just want to be sure. It's, it's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? Because of what we had done? 
But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive, this artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did. Oh my god. The grav drive destroyed Earth. And at the core of the first drive, an artifact.
prepared and... understand now why I asked you to come here? The artifacts unlock the secret of interstellar travel. At the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. 
Why have one world when you can have all the settled systems? Every grab drive in the settled systems was built on technology that came from an artifact that was discovered on Mars. But these early drives shook the gravity field surrounding Earth. Eventually, the atmosphere started to slowly sputter away into space. That's why Earth is uninhabitable. The artifact gave the scientists a greater understanding of time and space, not the wisdom to see where that would lead. The settled systems wouldn't exist without the artifacts, in other words. We owe what happened here in NASA a great debt. Assuming we weren't going to lose it anyway. War, disease, famine, all the classics. Don't you see? The power of the artifacts forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? And what gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That's why we watch over them. The only thing you're watching out for is yourself. Don't be a fool. The Emissary and I may have our differences, but you do not want to give us a common enemy. For once, he's right. Don't do this. We can collect the final pieces together. Well, look at that. The Emissary just became my new best friend. You've made your choice. When you're ready, the Hunter and I will be at the Buried Temple. That's where we'll settle things. Meaning, we'll kill you. But hey, at least we'll wait till you get there. Everyone deserves a shot at the final artifact. 